Art, what are some of the most obvious site characteristics you're seeing here at the Copley Community Orchard? Well, the uh, one thing is that it's on a, a, a pretty good slope here that uh, has a northern aspect. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's an important feature in our climate, our dry summers and wet winters. And uh, I think it was one of the reasons for the agricultural history on this site, some of which we can read in the trees that, and so on that we see around us. So I'm gonna ask you to kind of talk about that, uh, history and also the current initiative that's underway here. Mm -hmm. So we're on a site that was traditionally um, the Copley Orchard, part of their larger farm um, operation. And the EYA has built on that agricultural history with a very recent 2012 um, community partnership to put in some of these lovely intensive fruit trees that you can see behind us. So um, the EYA, or the Environmental Youth Alliance, is a local youth-driven not-for-profit that seeks to create meaningful change in their community um, through environmental stewardship. Okay, so the fact that there are originally fruit trees on this site and that EYA has chosen to uh, continue that tradition must also tell us something about the soils and the soil characteristics and perhaps that's what we should move on and talk about next. All right. So Art, what can we learn from this pit that we've dug here? The first thing is that doing soil science in the city can be very interesting and full of surprises. What we have on this site is glacial marine parent material, which is what you tend to find between 35 and 65 meters of elevation in the city of Vancouver. But uh, what's kind of unique about it is the amount of coarse fragment that we see scattered up and down the profile. Um, which uh, tends to indicate uh, disturbance in this particular uh, area that we're, we're in here. Actual texture of the soil is pretty much what we would expect. It looks like it's a silt loam. It's not a real coarse textured soil like a lot of them in Vancouver. It's not clay, but it's, it's got a nice medium texture, which is really a good soil for water holding capacity, nutrient holding capacity, and uh, just generally for, for growing most of the crops that, that we want to grow. Uh, it is uh, susceptible to uh, uh, compaction if we were on here with heavy equipment. But uh, the, the thing that, that makes this site a bit more difficult for, particularly for annual crops, would be the amount of uh, coarse fragment in here. So Art, I can see that the soil in that shovel looks a little bit different than what's going on in the pit. I, I'm using it to illustrate the, the variability over short distances that you get in, particularly in urban soils. And uh, this is just about 20 or 30 meters over behind us there near the, uh, the orchard, the new orchard. The texture of this material is pretty similar to where we are, but you don't see any coarse fragments in here. And this would be more typical of what I would expect in a glacial marine situation. There can be some stones and so on, but uh, usually not too much. And so this soil will be quite amenable to uh, use for annual crop production or perennials like we have here. This, this is a very, very good uh, uh, soil uh, plow layer or rooting zone. Um, the, the key issue in this particular soil is drainage. And the fact that we're on a, uh, a fairly steep slope here means that the surface drainage really compensates for that. It, it doesn't have to be perfectly drained through the profile because there's not gonna be standing water here over the winter. It's not gonna hurt those apple trees over there. Art, you mentioned that there's some stones in the Whatcom Scat soils here, but what's the texture like? Okay, and, and it's a good question because uh, sometimes people lose track of the fine materials and that's really what is important in holding water and nutrients. Your average gardener, I think, we will be quite able to do this, is to check the soil texture by hand texturing. So the idea is if it's got clay in it, the clay will cause the soil particles to adhere to each other and it would form a very nice ribbon all the way down my hand for a clay soil. This uh, is not that, it does not have that much clay so I would expect a little bit of ribboning, and then it begins to break off. 
so it's probably more in the loam or silt loam area and our more coarse textured soils which we will see at other sites in Vancouver you won't be able to form any kind of a ribbon you can also rub that in the palm of your hand to, to check to see if there are any sand grains in there that's the other thing and uh, there are a few here so you know it's got some silt some sand some clays uh, overall a very nice uh, collection of particle sizes for what we want to do on the site.